Kia ora uh, My name's Nick, and I'm from the University of Auckland. Uh, this is a bit of a throwback to COVID times for me, as uh, we're going on on the web webinar, not necessarily being able to see everybody, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, thank you for coming along. Um, today, what I'm going to do is talk about a, a set of transitions pathways. I use pathways in a in a looseish sense. So these are possible transitions directions. And when we talk about transitions, it's really from where we are to uh, towards a flourishing blue economy, which for us at, at Sustainable Seas means a particular thing. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, I'll talk you through how the research has led us to these pathways and um, introduce some recommendations that we, we hope will be acted upon by various actors um, in, in this economy, and there are many. Um, <clears throat> But first, a, a couple of slides outlining what it is that we mean by blue economy and how we came to that that definition and and how how our research um, der derived from there and led us really into thinking about uh, transitions uh, itself as a way of of developing a blue economy. Uh, this work has been done quite closely with. Um, the challenge leadership team, but also with Richard Leheron, who co-led this project with me. So really, we, we need to write, wind the clock back about 10 years to um, get a sense of what we mean by blue economy. Um, a proliferation of interest in, in things in the marine space uh, for economic use. The language that was given to this globally was the blue economy. Uh, and the people using that language were anything from the World Bank uh, to small community groups in Indonesia and the Philippines looking to secure um, their coastal resources. So uh, humanity's future depends on the oceans. There are vast opportunities out there, but a recognition really that uh, realizing those opportunities and um, securing uh, humanity's use of the resources would mean a very different way of using those resources to what we had done on land a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, so sustainability was really at the heart of this new global discourse, only about 10 years old. Uh, and with it, uh, that, that really difficult question of how we balance um, interests in resource use uh, for economic ends uh, while safeguarding ecological, uh, cultural, community concerns. Uh, in the New Zealand context, the challenge was given, uh, the Sustainable Seas Challenge was given the objective of enhancing the utilization of marine resources within environmental and biological limits. And it also had at core a vision of healthy, healthy oceans into the future and a set of, and a commitment to ecosystem-based management as a way of achieving these. Um, so realizing that, that kind of vision in a blue economy moment um, really led us to think about uh, going beyond the growth within limits, uh, uh, ideas that might lie, be, may have lain be behind our objective, and to think through what doing economy better might mean. Um, and for us, this meant, if, it meant transitioning to a more environmentally and socially just economy. Uh, and to the active interventions necessary to secure those transitions, because those transitions would not help happen by themselves. So the research theme, um, the uh, Blue Economy research theme uh, within the challenge adopted a definition then, our own definition of Blue Economy. Lots of people were adopting different kinds of, de of definitions globally. But this was the definition that best we thought best suited our context. Um, so we see it as an aspiration composed of marine activities that generate economic value and contribute positively to social, cultural, and ecological well-being. What's important is not delineating between what's in a blue economy and what's out, um, but really about adopting a more holistic interpretation of the notion of economy of building on the resources in place uh, to build economic activities that contribute positively uh, in this kind of way. Recognizing the, the presence of, and the importance of Māori leadership in those kinds of activities. 
the need to build on the direct, the diverse range of activities that are already in place. So our first phase of research was able to identify uh, a whole string of activities that met our definition of blue economy and, and provided, if you like, the foundation for thinking about wider transitions, uh, building new activities that are committed that are committed to the same kind of notion of co contribution to social, cultural, and ecological well-being, as well as e uh, <clears throat> materializing economic opportunities. Um, we thought that we needed to go to active transitioning. And in a, in a sense, that meant to us making a blue economy imaginable, visible, manageable, material, and investable. So this sense of bringing a blue economy into being. And, the, and what we could what we could sort of base this on really is a sense of of recognizing the vast range of activities that we currently have. Many of them are commodity economy based um, activities. Uh, and in those kinds of spaces, maybe working towards a blue economy would mean uh, adopting sustainable technologies. Um, it would be improving our sustainability performance. It might be moving more to uh, sustainability reporting structures so that within uh, a broader pri uh, primary commodity kind of um, industrial structure, we could actually make improvements. But if you're thinking about transitions through time, maybe it is that we need to pri prioritize capability building, research, investment uh, through policy and other kinds of um, ways of going about things to supporting uh, activities that do no harm, um, that have a stronger sustainability within them, and even move towards activities that are actively restorational um, in uh, the way in which, or regenerative in the way in which they work. So um, creating win-win economic and environmental activities, finding green finance and um, uh, philanthropic finance that will also generate economic um, gains as the same at the same time of restoring economies and trying to shift our whole um, investment uh, thinking and our business models to incorporating restoration and uh, regeneration at their core. Neatly, that will also mean that will dovetail very nicely with the transition from commodity economy to high values economy, which has been the mantra in New Zealand for getting on to 70 years now, uh, which is quite staggering if you run read some historical um, stuff around how to build New Zealand's economy. And would at the same time perhaps move us from a, a sense of achieving trickle down effects um, for community gain, uh, through to uh, communities being actively um, involved in and generating some kind of prosperity out of uh, the use of our oceans. Um, and what we should immediately recognize also is that Māori uh, owned and Māori led um, economic activities firms and the like are firmly in the top part of that, um, of, of that pyramid and moving up those lines uh, almost as a given in terms of, of environmental commitments, in terms of collective ownership patterns, uh, structures within, uh, within Māori and so on. So that's the preamble, I hope. Um, so what does this mean in, 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 in practice? How do we go about actively transitioning and making a blue economy in this kind of context? Uh, and the, the, the three kinds of pathways that we've adopted within the challenge, I'll, I'll talk you through now. The first was um, identifying some priority spheres for our own research spending so that we were actually um, <clears throat> putting our money where our mouth was. Uh, we devised a set of blue economy principles and we've made increasing um, commitments, I guess, uh, to, to researching in the sphere of place-based ba place development and to recommending it as a way of thinking about building a blue economy. So our research and all of this stuff is, is available on the website or through Tohora, which is our new um, 
AI generated natural language interface to our material. Um, we conducted research in ecotourism. We conducted research um, to, to set uh, a seaweed sector framework, which would build uh, a, a seaweed sector as it develops within the kinds of uh, sets of understandings of what constitutes a blue economy. Uh, we did some research on um, what it would take to encourage restoration economies, to encourage uh, green and other forms of um, environmental finance um, and philanthropy into activities um, that would simultaneously generate environmental, social and economic returns. And we invested heavily in um, indigenizing blue economy pro projects, um, projects that sought to uncover and begin to cons construct the institutions and capability building structures necessary to grow a Māori economy, a uh, Māori blue economy, and to see their Māori principles um, spread and proliferate across other spheres of the blue economy. So we invested um, our own research in that and produced and worked with uh, co-development partners um, who are actually involved in these kinds of practices themselves. So in a sense, through those research projects, we were already putting in place a range of kind of transition mechanisms. Um, these were our innovation projects. So we did this. Uh, we also tried to redefine innovation in blue economy terms, in terms that would embrace Mataranga Māori projects um, as innovative um, and link them through into other forms of innovation, business and otherwise, and uh, as well as some more conventional um, innovation projects that would uh, hopefully yield sustainability gains as well as um, uh, productivity gains and effectiveness gains um, in economic terms. These were our blue economy principles, um, which, again, not, not radical in, in some ways, but when combined uh, together, certainly novel. Uh, and we, in writing these principles, we uh, worked with stakeholder groups, we worked with Māori partners, we worked with the research community widely, we drew on international best practice, Catherine Short from Teramoana helped us uh, do, do some of this, this work. Uh, we, we came up with a set of six principles that uh, people could live with uh, across those diverse, that diverse stakeholding group. Um, and which notably for us doesn't include the word growth, but includes the word prosperity. So this holistic notion of what economy might be is, um, encapsulated in that particular principle. Each of those principles came with a set of guidelines, which will, which, and I'll, I'll put up a slide in a second, um, which are one of the ways, the guidelines are one of the ways that we hope that these don't just become uh, funky little graphs that sit or, or diagrams that sit on someone's desk and then disappear from sight over, over time and that we, uh, and that just stay in the ether and don't materialize in in in, um, in investment terms. Um, so we, and we have a, a few more of those things that I'll come to in a second, ways in which we hope these principles will become materialized. So the first really is through these, through these sets of guidelines that we, um, we produce. So this is guidelines for two of those principles. And I focus just on the inclusive uh, principle or principle of inclusivity. Uh, what we hope is those that the guidelines will enable uh, a range of different responses to this to these principles in material terms. And that range may go in the case of inclusivity from more effectively engaging communities um, in on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're a firm or a government agency, um, right through to more formal participatory processes. Um, in, in decision making, all the way through potentially to um, generating some kind of community dividend associated with the use of resources. So well beyond the standard notion of 
social license to operate. So we think that the, the principles may encourage those kinds of that kind of thinking, and it will encourage that kind of thinking and action in in the work of government agencies, in the work of investors, particularly as they respond um, to uh, to new demands from customers and from supply chain partners, particularly in association with or related to um, uh, nature related disclosures, um, expectations, uh, expectations held by banks, held by insurance companies, held by supply chain partners. We think that the principles may help guide the sort of baby steps or intermediate steps may guide um, users, businesses into that world. We also hope that the uh, principles or see no reason why the principles might not be picked up um, in policy development processes and might not, why they may not get picked up by regional councils to the extent that they have levers to pull around planning and around consenting processes. Um, we think that may might land in particular around um, science, science funding, research funding. Um, it, they could become part of the criteria um, for judging bids uh, around science funding. They could become part of the process to encourage co-development processes uh, through research funding. And should we go into in, uh, over a period of time before the principles sort of dissipate um, and something else replaces them, if, if we are in realms of regulatory implementation or reform, we hope that they might become part of the conversations that um, better involved. And in particular, which takes us to our third um, uh, transition pathway or transition sphere, if you like, we hope that they might underpin collective value propositions for place-based strategies. So these principles bring together a uh, place with EBM, uh, with Māori rights and interests <coughs> uh, and Māori leadership of a blue economy development processes um, <clears throat> and may inform uh, the collective value propositions necessary for place-based development platforms. So this, this is our third, uh, our, our third, if you like, transition pathway players loosely, used loosely. Um, so that if we if we turn to place as the starting point for building blue, a blue economy, uh, we immediately um, embed concerns with uh, Te Ao Māori, we immediately embed uh, ecosystem-based management in that blue economy thinking. We can get to mana whenua-led local participation that joins up business and community uh, much more easily than thinking about national economic growth um, uh, um, objectives or uh, targets and so on. So the shift to, to place into the region is one way of building a blue economy in the way that we um, um, defined it. Uh, so our research in the challenge has, has come up with a number of exemplars of, of community-led blue economy development, which I won't go through here, but it, they do point to a range of different ways that different places and different groups can pull together a blue economy, be that based on, uh, in Kaikoura, on uh, you know, the, the MPAs, the whales, the canyon, uh, the governance structure around the MPAs that has developed, uh, uh, yielded some interest in development agency from the Runanga and from, the, uh, from Te Korowai or Te Taim Marokura be it uh, try building these kinds of notions into into intergenerational community strategies as uh, Te Tauiku has done under the leadership of Wakatu and Miriana Stevens. So there's, we, we, we just see this way of thinking as being picked up in this place-based development process. We worked with a range of community organizations um, to actually action some of this stuff. Finally, uh, what the challenge has done is uh, funded, uh, given some pilot and initial funding to, to Moana Nui, which is an independent cluster slash catalyzer uh, that aims to accelerate a blue economy uh, via um, more, if you like, mainstream 
economic thinking, economic development thinking in terms of uh, the commercialization pathway uh, pipeline, in terms of bringing innovators together with entrepreneurs, together with um, uh, different forms of funding agency, international partnerships, um, and just smoothing the pipelines, if you like. And Wananui has 30 plus partners now, I think maybe the number is 35. Um, has its partners commit to the B, B principles um, in a pledge and they and it operates as an independent agency. So there are different ways of doing region-based um, or place-based development that fits nicely into uh, national, um, national objectives works from a from place up. So bringing all that together, um, these are the recommendations that we make in our IFI2 um, gui guidelines and recommendations documents that are available to you uh, on the website. Our recommendations are to adopt the principles to guide national sectoral regional economic development strategies, to embed those principles um, in decision making, uh, to support Māori Blue Economy capability and initiatives uh, and align all BE policy with Māori aspirations and institutions. This really is a reflection of the reality of, um, of Māori prominence in, in the Blue Economy, uh, in, its, in, its, in the economic activities that go on in the oceans, as well as in the governance of those activities and the governance of the, of the oceans. So as well as um, uh, seeing this as, as good for the nation, it's actually a reflection of the reality uh, of the regions um, and, uh, and the reality of who is out there doing interesting things. We would, we would recommend the prioritization of place-based economic development. That might mean anything from increasing recognition within central government of um, place-based uh, uh, approaches through to regional councils trying to pull together their resource management and their economic development wings so, um, and giving them a prod to, to push the blue economy as a potential platform. Um, and we we do see the long-term value of, of something like Moana uh, as an independent blue economy development organization. And, that really does dovetail with the challenges recommendation overall, that one of the things that we're missing um, in that interplay between resource management and blue economy is some real leadership um, and certainty that brings together a range of different regulatory um, organizations and development agencies uh, behind some concerted leadership. I think I'll leave it there. So kia ora and thank you for uh, listening to that. Kia ora, Nick. Thank you for your kareiro. Uh, we do have a few minutes for questions, so if you have anything you would like to ask Nick about his presentation, um, please do pop that into the Q&A or the chat. Uh, while we wait, Nick, you mentioned that uh, leadership or a lack of is a kind of a barrier. Uh, would that be the biggest barrier? Are there any other barriers that you think should be identified? Uh, it's. I think it's the biggest barrier in terms of initiating some of these transitions. Um, it, but in terms of actually materialising the transitions, there are a range of other other barriers. They uh, they lie. Yeah, they lie in mind frames. They lie in uh, having the courage to seek capital that will. Um, that will support blue economy ideas. They lie in resistance um, to these ideas uh, that are coming uh, through nature related disclosures um, as much as anything else. Um, and of course, all the stuff around short termism of investment models and short termism around um, regulatory approaches as well. So I, I suspect the way to push through these things um, and to materialize some of the ideas that we've recorded as happening in the country, but 
also some of the ideas that you might extrapolate from uh, uh, the conceptual work that we've done requires uh, some strong leadership. And the example of the Tetawi who intergenerational strategy is one where the leadership came from Wakatu, which is a, a big business that straddles multiple um, parts of of the blue economy and the wider economy um, is fully and thoroughly committed to Te Ao Māori. And um, there was a, an individual leader, with Miriana Stevens, within that group. So I think it demonstrates that some of the agency, some of the force and leadership that um, can be mobilised doesn't necessarily sit within government or within communi formal community organisations or within local government, it can sit um, in unexpected places. So in Southland, um, the new aquaculture hub is likely to become a driver of a, an interesting blue economy that fits tourism to aquaculture to fisheries. And the leadership there is coming from an entrepreneur. The leadership in, in Tutawi, who has come from a Māori um, enterprise, final best enterprise. The leadership in, in Kaikoura is coming from Te Korowai and Arunanga, as well as Whale Watch. So there's this leadership can come from lots of places and take lots yeah. of forms. But it, sorry, I, I can't see if there's other chats, so I'll just say this final thing to connect to that. And in many ways, it has a, a very material dimension to it because it requires um, a coordination and of a whole range of, of place-based assets, be they uh, social infrastructure, social institutions, um, regulations that might make certain things possible in that place, uh, bringing together government agencies, knocking heads, uh, bringing together community groups with businesses and so on. So it's, it, it's a very material thing. It's not just someone cheering from the sideline. 